Welcome to this short video tutorial showing you how to format your TMAs. Hello, I'm Paul Carter, one of your tutors for TU100. The version of Word I'm using here is from Office 2010. Word 2007 will be very similar, but if you have a version of Word that's older or you're using another word processing package and you don't know how to do what I'm showing you here, then first of all check the help within your package. You can often do that by just pressing the F1 key on most programs. And if the answer is not there, then ask me, your tutor, for help. The good news is that if you're using Word 2007 and 2010, then the default settings for fonts and spacing are pretty much acceptable from my point of view. Other tutors will have their own preferences, so please always check with your own tutor. Here then is an example of what I'd like to see on my computer monitor when marking your TMA. Oh, and by the way, the text I'm using here is not from anyone's TMA, it's randomly generated Microsoft help text. First, you'll notice this greyed out area at the top of the document. This is the header text. The text inside a header will appear on every page that you produce, so using it can save you time. You need to make sure that you've included certain information in your TMA, and you could type it at the beginning of your document, but having to add it to every page is unnecessary if you make use of the header. Your tutor will want to know whose TMA they're marking. They may even have more than one TMA open at a time on their computer screen. So your name and OUID, the TMA number, the course number, can be typed in here. So let me show you how to add a document header. I'm going to open a new blank document. I do that by doing Control N. And you can go up to File, New. Now if we type here, anything we type will appear in the normal body of the document. Uh, you can't type up here, you can't click in here, you have to double click at the top. And now you can enter the sort of details that you want to appear on every page. So my dummy student is called Anno New Student. Type the name. If you press tab, please don't use the space bar because that puts all sort of formatting problems into your document. When you press tab, it moves to the center. So here I could put TU100 and I could put TMA01 or whatever it is. If I press tab again, cursor moves to the right side of the document header and in here I might want to put my PI, my personal identifier, OU identity. Uh, I'll make one up. And that's done. I can click up here to close the header or I can just double click in the body. Notice how it greys out. We've done that job now and it will appear on every page. I'll go back to the document I had open earlier and you'll see here as we go down that it's on page 2, the header information and it appears on page 3. So that's the way to add a header. Let's now talk a little bit about font choices. The default font for Word 2010 is Calibri. The default in older versions of Word was Arial. I find both Calibri and Arial easy fonts to read on screen and like most tutors these days I do most of my marking on screen. A long time ago now Courier was the only font available for word processing in the age of typewriters and dot matrix and golf ball printers. Now that a myriad of fonts can be generated by inkjet and laser printers, the choice is much, much wider. Courier was a good font for proofreading when the only practical way to read a document was to print it out. But now that most of us, well, markers of TMAs anyway, read documents on screen, we prefer a modern font such as Calibri. It is a good idea to avoid Comic Sans and other novelty fonts for reasons I won't go into here, but if you are interested, you can waste, I mean spend, many hours online reading about why this font and fonts like Courier should never be used unless you intend to make a particular point. And just a very quick word about font colours. I will be using blue for adding comments to your TMAs and so please use black for your answers unless you have a particular need to use other colours. Let's now take a look at line spacing. 
the default setting for line spacing in Word is 1.15. I would prefer your TMAs to have line spacing no wider than that. You can adjust it here in the home ribbon. There's a drop down that will give you a range of sizes. And there you can see we can select various line spacing. I'm just going to select this text. So whatever I do on line spacing will only affect that text. At the moment it's 1.15. That's one. It's a little bit cramped. One and a half, two, and three. When Tutor's marked a printed out version of TMAs, it was handy to be able to fit comments in between lines, and so students were often told to double space their work. Nowadays most tutors mark your TMAs on screen as we've discussed. We can place our comments anywhere we need within your TMA and so double line spacing is no longer a necessity. And it just makes documents longer and more tedious to scroll through. So here we go again. This icon, line and paragraph spacing, drop down and I'm happy with the default 1.15. There's another couple of options here to do with spaces before and after paragraphs. I like to see a space between paragraphs and this is where you can adjust it. So this is the default setting, add space before paragraph. And if you leave it at that, that's what I like to see when I'm marking. Now a word about setting out questions and question numbers. I don't need you to reproduce the questions from the TMA in your answers. I won't read them there anyway, as I use my own copy of the TMA questions. Including the questions in your answer just adds to the amount of scrolling backwards and forwards that I have to do when navigating your document. If you really need to add the TMA questions, and I know some of you may find that helpful for you, then please at least change the font colour of these so that I can quickly distinguish the bits of your work that I don't need to read. Question numbers, however, are essential. There's no need to go in for any fancy formatting, such as indentations for question parts and subparts. Just make sure that the appropriate number appears before that particular answer. It's just a matter of using the exact same numbering system used in the TMA questions. You might want to write the word question in front of the question numbers and I don't mind if that helps you. And that's it for now. I hope you found that useful. There may be a follow-up video to this one called Hints and Tips Part 2 if I find the time. But for now, thanks for watching.